Okay, welcome to ICSC Tool Time, and we have a wonderful panel today. We have Russ back here, uh, Russ Schoen from Chicago. We have Roger Firestein from Williamsville. <laughs> <laughs> we have Mike Fox from Military Road, and I'm Susan Keller Mathers, and this is CRS 670 class, and some of our alumni. So welcome to all of our uh, discussion members today. We're gonna go through quite a few tools today and just talk about what are some tips, best practices, how to use it effectively, and also we're gonna look at some of the applications. I have forced connections, and I wanna ask the, our, our group here, how many of you, when you did forced connections the first time, were like just blown away? That's good, Tom. Yeah, good. Yeah, because th this technique is just so basically simple. It's like creativity 101. And when you go out there and you do it with a group, you say, and essentially the technique, as you know, is take a look at the situation that you're working on, make a connection with, the, with something that doesn't relate with it at all. And what we did in class oftentimes is we, you would use pictures, um, but you can use objects, you can use sounds, you can use uh, 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 tastes, you can use experiences. But I tell people, you know, there's a lot of books out there on creativity that have 101 creativity techniques, and you really don't need to buy them because it's all forced connections. <laughs> and that really, what we talk about, is the essence of creativity, which is bringing together two things that are not considered related in a new way to create a new idea, a new option. Um, and so this is just, you know, you talk about the, the little black dress of creativity techniques. This is like the go-to technique for me. Um, and the way I've used it with groups is, is I have a lot of picture books. I put those on the table. Have those people have folks use those. Um, I uh, use PowerPoint slides to help people do that as well. And just to kind of get some categories, and this is also for visual connections as well. If you're using doing force connections or visual connections, the pictures should be from four categories: people, nature, machinery, or the non-living world, and food. So people nature, machinery, non-living world, or food, and food. Stay away from uh, recognizable people or logos or things that are controversial. But it's a marvelous technique. And the other thing is too is that, Russ, you talked a bit about the PCA, and, and this is one of those things that really sticks with people as well because it's so transportable. And so when you're working on a challenge, myself, when I'm working on something that's, you know, and I'm having a challenge, I look out the window, you know, or I listen to some music, or I take a break and find something. And you can elaborate it, you can string it out a little bit more. Uh, the whole excursion technique in many cases you can use as a forced connection. So you're working on a challenge, take a break, go out and find something, you guys have done that in classes, and then bring that back and use it to make a connection with you. So, um, and it's just delightful and it's fun and, and it's so effective. So, um, and really one of those real transportable tools. So, uh, That's the explanation, you guys have comments on that? Yeah, Val? I remember using Excursion and 559 with mm -hmm. Force Connections, and the challenge I was working on, um, as I was going home, I saw this dress that was such a big part of the challenge I was working on that I would never have thought of if wow. we didn't do that. So to me, it was like, holy cow, it was breathtaking almost, because I didn't even realize it. I just wrote it down, yeah. and I didn't know why I even wrote it down. So the next day when we were working on the challenge, I was like, my god. You know, I think I remember that. You were like, like I saw the light bulbs go off yeah. on you. Yeah, yeah, and it's just that powerful, that simple, that elegantly simple, yeah. and then bang, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Force Connections is my favorite tool out of all the tools. <laughs> I remember last semester in um, 610 when we uh -huh. had to do the project, yeah. I actually created a um, Force Connection uh, box. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. Uh, what ideas you get from looking at this. And like some of them were actual um, items you can hold, but it was, you know, related to the five categories. And yeah, I don't know. I just love the tool for some reason. The ultimate force connection technique. Can I tell a quick, quick story sure. about Sid Parnes? Uh, Sid Parnes used to do these big. Uh, we would be over in the communication center, in the big, huge communication center. And this was during the Creative Problem Solving Institute, and it was full of people. And what he would have done before, what we'd have, he would have people had, have the aides do before, which I helped as well, is uh, he had all these different scents like almond and uh, rubbing alcohol and you know and lemon and stuff, and we'd put them on uh, cotton swabs and we'd tape them underneath the chairs. So at a certain stage in the process, when you're working on something, Sid would say, "Reach under the chair and grab what's under there and smell it." And it was just like blowing people away because it grabbed stuff and the, and the room just filled with all these different aromas. It was fabulous. But it was really a neat technique and that's a force connection. That was an olfactory force connection. 
Um, so, you know, anything. And you guys can do it with food because food gives you sense. And, and a particularly the olfactory thing was really powerful because oftentimes you, you smell something that takes you back to memories you had years before because it's just going right into your brain. So anything like that to make those connections. And so we use pictures because they're easily transportable, but you can use just about anything. Just get it out of the, the, the run. If you're running this way, as far as sharing ideas, it gets you out this way. And cotton balls in those little baggies, I know we've all talked about yeah. this, rather than spraying something yeah, yeah, that yeah. could, you know, the whole allergic reaction. Yeah. Or even objects, you have to be careful when you start passing them. We had a tulip bulb once that went around and three people broke out. Mm. So, you know, you, you watch out for anything that might have a reverse effect where they can't concentrate. Best not to use loaded mouse traps. That doesn't work very well. Barbed wire, no, don't use that. <laughs> As a build on the, the sensory piece, um, you can get the, the scent sticks that, that you can dip in the, in the essences. Oh, yeah. And so the cotton balls can be kind of mucky, but these you're holding the dry in, oh, yeah. and they're yes. easily disposed of. Yeah. Yeah. If you use the feelies as a, a forced connection, you, you put a pine cone in a, in a brown paper lunch bag. You can't look. You have to reach in and mm -hmm. touch it. It's not fair to look. Uh, or maybe it's a piece of felt or, or whatever it might be, the, uh, uh, the rules in that case are don't look, and for the facilitator, make it safe. Right. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. safety's number one. We always assume that people are sighted, so some of these other ways of breaking yes. patterns yes. Really yes. can be really wonderful. And that yeah. way music is really yes. powerful. Yeah. Five senses. Mm -hmm. yeah. So powerful. Yeah, and so we would also do that as well. You know, like we'll play a piece of music. What ideas do you get from music? Because that's a wonderful excursion. Because you, it's an, and, and Force Connections is, is like the, the first stage to an excursion. You know, it's, that's just the light touch. And then when you really get into it, then the excursion principle is basically the same. But yeah, you can get right into there and listen to some music. And what does that remind you of? And what are your feelings around that? And then bring those connections back. So, yeah. But that's a real go-to technique. It's just... And it's easy. It's great, when, it's great when groups are looking for novelty. Yep. So when you really want to push them for sort of more on the uh, breakthrough side or more novel options, that's one to go to. So we have this whole body of tools that are, that are similar. Force connections being the simplest will get you novelty. VIR will get you more novelty, take right. you a little farther out. Same with excursion. Right. You can really take it. All right. Great. And that, um, if you don't focus the group, if you have pictures, yeah. if you don't focus the group, it's very hard to have them come up with something from the picture. Yeah. And I also see a lot of people are very like moving too fast maybe for the group sometimes too, so you have, just have to be careful. I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, I, I just like pound this thing into you guys. What ideas do you get from this picture? Use that phrase because people will show a picture and go, it's doing anything for you? Well, yeah. no. Look. You know, yeah. It, it, you know, because you're using language on there because you're assuming that they have an idea. So, what ideas does this give you? And so, when you see it, okay. So it tells your brain to start looking for ideas instead of like, here, look at this. Well, what am I supposed to do with it? So, right on the money, honey. Yeah. I'll yeah. often state the problem statement with it. Yep. What yep. ideas can you get for right. how to build a better bathtub right. from this? This. Yeah. Can I ask a question? No, too. Um, I read in a book. <laughs> the innovative, it must be true. Innovative team, actually, the innovative team, um, where they used they took an object uh -huh. and then sort of like stopped the work for a minute and then they asked the group, okay, look at this object. What are the characteristics of this object? And they list, you know, a, or made a whole list of things with this object. And then they took what they have listed and then applied it to. Um, the problem statement. Very similar to VIR, okay? Mm -hmm. Also, that, that's also kind of borders on a thing called attribute listing. Okay. We list the attributes of an object and then you make connections from the attributes. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, once you're trained and you show how to use all these tools effectively, you can begin to play with them. Yeah. yeah. Because you know the function of the tool. You know what it's supposed to do, you know how it works. So you say, well, hey, maybe I'll do this a little longer. Maybe I'll ask a few questions around it. Maybe we'll write down the attributes and that would help them. Because you know, at that point, as a trained facilitator, you know what you're doing, you know the effect you're going for, you keep the eye on the goal, and, um, and you can play with it a bit. 
And Sue, so just to build on that, it's, it's like playing music. You have to learn the scales first. So one of the things that we emphasize here is like, you know, we drill you, do this, you know, get it down really well. And then once you got that unconsciously, then you can start playing with it a little bit. But always keeping in mind what the essence of that technique is. Take a look at the problem, go in somewhere else, make a connection, bring it back. So, and how you make that connection is really up to you, you know. And you can have a lot of fun with it. So, Any final things, Russ? It's, it's one of those, I like to say, the Swiss Army knife of creative problem solving tools. You got it, yeah. That's right. it, it's uh, along with stick them up brainstorming, that is one that um, I use almost every session I facilitate. Me too. That was forced connections. That was forced, forced connections. That was forced connections. <laughs> <laughs>